Hello guys, uh, so today we are starting with the another topic that is the casting procedures and the defects. So these are the contents. Starting with the history part, in 11th century, the Theophilus described the lost wax technique, which was common practice for making jewelry. In 1558, B. Cellini claims to have attempted use of wax and clay for the preparation of various castings. In year 1884, A. D. Saran used 24 carat gold to form the inlay. In year 1897, Philip Brook described a method of casting metal filling. 1907, Tagrid devised a practically useful casting machine. In 1959, Strickland et al. state that importance of the type, the shape, location and the direction other than the size of the sprue. Apart from this, various studies conducted on the properties of the investment materials and the casting alloys that have led a path for the better practical and the useful processing methods. Coming on to the casting, what is casting? It is defined as something that has been cast in a mold, an object formed by the solidification of the fluid that has been poured or injected into a mold. It is known as casting. So this is what a casting is. You have a wax, you have a dye in which you created a wax pattern and the wax pattern is now connected to a sprue with the help of the sprue into a on a sprue base that is known as sprueing method and your sprue waste along with the sprue you place it into an investment investment material is placed into this which is known as the investing now you put this complete you can see you can put this complete invest investing thing into the furnace and which leads to the burnout of the wax when there is a burnout of the wax what you then a hole is created a gap is created because your wax is burnt out into a furnace and you put a casting alloy into the this space which is known as casting after this the breakout casting from the investment then you put this whole then uh, this is the oxidized metal and after this you take out that your sprue and the your cast you can the it is known as a complete casting you take out the casting from the investment and you can break the cast and you will get a pickle casting in which what is pickle casting in which the oxides are removed and this is what you get a, sp a remove sprue and polish you can remove the sprue sprue yeah. after the pickling stage you have to remove the sprue and you polish your cast your casting and after that you deliver your material or you can say you deliver your casting to the patient this is the complete process this complete process is known as casting starting with the wax pattern then comes your sprueing in which your sprue in your on your sprue base you attach the sprue and then investment you put in investment material and the, the, you, this complete thing you put into a furnace in that the wax is burned out 
and you put your cast material into that uh, hollow space and after that you just break out the casting from the investment and then you pickle the cast it means you remove the oxide and then you remove the screw you remove the screw and the screw base and then you polish your cast your casting material your casting and then you deliver this to your patient this complete process is known as casting so what all are the objectives of the casting to heat the alloy as quickly as possible to completely up in a molten condition to prevent oxidation by heating the metal with a well adjusted torch to produce a casting with the sharp details by having adequate pressure to the wall melted metal to force into the mold the process of attaching a sprue former or a sprue pin to the wax pattern is known as sprueing so what is the purpose of sprueing it is basically to provide a channel through which molten alloy can reach the mold in an investment ring after the wax has been eliminated it means after the burn out what you get you get a hollow space in which you put your casting material so what are the basic requirements of the sprue it must allow the molten wax to escape from the mold the sprue must enable the molten metal to flow into the mold with the little turbulence as possible metal must remain molten slightly longer than the alloy that has filled the mold so types of screw there are three types of screw you can use that is the wax screw the metal and the plastic the wax screw you can use this uh, wax uh, screw into the larger restoration for example your removable partial denture frameworks metal can be used in the smaller restoration that are in the crowns and your plastic screw you can use in the smaller restorations first is the wax screw it is used as a single stage burnout it is most more preferred because it melts at the same rate as the pattern and allow for the easy escape for the molten wax plastic or the resin sprue it is used for casting of alloys which use two stage burnout with a phosphate bonded investment so the their main and disadvantage is its softening temperature which is higher than the wax pattern and may block escape of the wax they may be used for casting fpds because of their high rigidity which minimizes the distortion the plastic sprue may be completely solid or hollow plastic coming on to the metal sprue it should be a non rust metal to avoid contamination of wax hollow metallic sprue increases the contact surface area and strengthen the attachment between the sprue and the pattern so they are removed from the investment at the same time as the crucible former what all are the advantages of hollow sprue former it increases the contact area it holds less heat than the solid sprue former so in this the care must be taken to examine the orifice for small particle of the investment that may break off while removing the metal sprue former coming on to the sprue former diameter the diameter and the length of the sprue former depends upon the size and the type of the pattern and the type of the casting machine which you are using 
in and the dimension of the casting ring in which the casting has to be done so prefabricated sprue former are available in a wide variety of gauge which ranges from 6 to 18 so the diameter of the sprue should be equal to the thickness of the wax portion of the pattern it's an important point it itself it is an mcq that the diameter of the sprue should be equal to the thickest portion the wax pattern so it is usually used for the molar and the metal ceramic restoration which ranges from 10 case that is 2.5 millimeter and also used in the premolar and the partial coverage restoration of 12 gauge that is around 2 millimeter so a narrow sprue may be useful in the air pressure casting procedure important point where the metal is melted in a conical depression formed by the crucible former so narrow sprue prevents premature metal flow into the mold so basically there are two types of sprue diameter that is the large diameter sprue and the less diameter sprue in the large diameter sprue this improves the flow of molten metal into the molds and less diameter sprue it causes the shrinkage porosity So, in this, now coming on to the sprue former length, the length of the sprue former is it keeps the wax pattern 6 mm from the end of the ring. It is an important point that the length of the sprue, this is your ring and this is your sprue former. So, th when you put it inside this, your length of your end of the ring and your end of the sprue former the beginning of the sprue former it should be 6 mm so basically it keeps the wax pattern 6 mm from the end of the ring important point so there are two types of sprue very short sprue and very long sprue so very short uh, sprue very short sprue it causes porosity in the casting where at the junction of the sprue and the pattern and when you are using very long sprue it solidified first leading to the casting shrinkage and incomplete casting it is a very important point you have to keep this in mind that very short sprue it causes the porosity in the casting where at the junction of the sprue and the pattern and very long sprue causes casting shrinkage and incomplete casting because it's solidified first so sprue former position the ideal area point of greatest bulk in the pattern it should be equally bulky so the point of attachment should permit stream of metal to be directed to all parts of the mold without having to flow opposite the direction of the casting force So can you see this the area of bulk is greater over here and it is lesser over here in this it is almost equal greatest bulk and in this it is almost at the point of greatest bulk can you see this it is also in the point of greatest bulk also in the, at the point of greatest bulk but it is thinnest at this point so the ideal area the point of greatest bulk pattern should be equal so basically it is used in the full veneer crown in this the sprue is attached to the maxillary buckle and the mandibular lingual cusp very important to rem remember and in the partial veneer crown sprue is attached to the cusp that encompasses the preparation so in full veneer crown the sprue is attached in the maxilla in the buckle and in the mandibular in the lingual cusp so in the maxilla in the buckle cusp and in the mandibular in the lingual cusp in the partial veneer crown the sprue is attached to the cusp that encompasses the preparation if attached to the cusp 
tip near the margin of the wax pattern. What will happen? It will get distort and restrict the flow of the motor metal into the mold. So please keep this in mind that you never ever attached your sprue former at the, to the cusp tip or near the margin of the wax pattern. Why? Because it distort your this thing your pattern and it restrict the flow of the mold metal into the mold it restrict the metal so very important question sprue former direction very very important it is attached to the 45 degree to the walls of the mold which decreases the turbulence of the mold metal see this is your mold cavity so where you have to attach the sprue can you see this it is attached at the 45 degree when you attach it like this it is at your right angle that is your 90 degree but you have to attach the sprue former 45 degree angle to the mold so this is your mold where you have to attach the sprue former it is attached at the 45 degree angle this angle this angle makes it 45 so one question came in your PJ exam that the sprue in the wax pattern should be placed at what angle? It was asked in your AI PJ exam. So your answer is at the 45 degree angle. I hope it is clear to you. Coming on to the attachment morphology. The attachment of the sprue formal to the wax pattern should be smooth and do not possess the pits or the irregularities or the voids. Irregularity produced tags of investment which is prone for fracture by molten alloy leading to the casting failure. If your attachment of the sprue formal to the wax pattern it should be smooth if it has the irregularity what it cause it cause the casting failure now types of attachment it is direct attachment and it indirect attachment it is directly attached to the base and it is it forms A reservoir you can see a bar to attach it is basically it needs a connector or a reservoir bar to attach it cannot be attached directly so in the indirect sprewing a connector or a reservoir bar is positioned between the pattern and the crucible form can you see this a connector or you can see a bar is placed between the crucible former and your pattern it is known as indirect spring and in this uh, direct spring you can say it is directly attached from the crucible former to your pattern so it is common to use indirect spring for multiple single units and the fixed partial tension if you are using uh, if you are doing a multiple units or a multiple single unit so you have to do it in a indirect sprueing method so sprue shape the sprue former should be straight to reduce the chances of creating turbulence in molten metal entering the mold high turbulence of the alloy leads to porosity Coming on to the number of sprue, usually a single sprue is used for the small casting. When two thick sections of a pattern are connected by a thin part of the wax, two separate sprues should be attached to each thick portion. A reservoir. A reservoir is a small amount of additional wax which is added to the sprue former near the junction of the wax pattern. It prevents localized shrinkage porosity as the alloy in this part solidifies last after the solidification of metal in the mold. So in this 
first your metal is solidified at last it is solidified the alloy is solidified so for this you need a reservoir can you see this in the picture in the it is a reservoir so it is used in the direct sprewing the horizontal running bar of the indirect spacing provides the same function they are used when the distance between the crucible and the patron is high so the reservoir is present in prefabricated plastic sprues also so reservoir and its importance it is inserted to prevent the localized shrinkage porosity because of its large mass of the alloy and position in the heat center of the ring the reservoir remains the molten to furnish liquid alloy into the mold as it solidifies so the resulting solidification shrinkage occurs in the reservoir bar and is not in the prosthesis so basically what happens is the solidification shrinkage occurs in your reservoir bar reservoir bar but not directly in the prosthesis important point it is the basic function of your reservoir venting the small auxiliary sprue or the vents are applied to a thin wax to improve the quality of casting usually 18 gauge sprues are used it is indicated with extremely thin or thick casting to produce non porous casting so they basically help in escape of the gases during casting and ensure beginning of solidification in critical areas by acting as a heat sink so it is attached to the wax pattern directly opposite to the larger sprue former now what is crucible former the sprue is attached to the crucible former which constitutes the base of the casting relation with the casting ring during the investing can you see this sprue is attached to the crucible former it also helps by holding sprue in the desired ring crucible formers are basically of two types that is steep sided cone and the shallow cone in a steep sided cone it is used with the metal when casted using centrifugal casting force while your shallow cone is used to cast the metal using the stream or the air pressure steep sided cone it is used when you are using the centrifugal casting force and shallow cone are used when you are using the stream or the air pressure so these crucible formers are available in various form that is the rubber crucible former the metal crucible former or the plastic crucible former they form a conical depression in investment which guides the flow of molten metal it should be clean and petroleum jelly is applied to prevent the formation of a rough investment tag then the end of the sprue former is passed into the hole and held in the position till the molten wax set so the end of the sprue former is passed at the hole what it does is it held the position of the sprue former till the end Coming on to the casting ring, the casting rings are used to confine the fluid investment around the wax pattern while the investment sets. It also allows the hardened investment to be safely handled during burnout and casting. So your casting rings are available in different sizes or shapes. 
in shapes it is available as a round and oval completed complete rings these are the rigid rings it may be made from the metal that is the stainless steel coming on to the plastic rings it is flexible made up of rubber and in the split rings they either made of metal or made of plastic these get split can you see this it gets split to do considerations in selection of casting rings the internal diameter of the casting ring should be 5 to 10 mm greater than the widest measurement of the pattern and about 6 mm of height it is very important point so for single crown or the inlay the small rings are used and with the diameter of 32 mm same way for the larger fixed partial tensure your 63 mm of the round or oval shaped casting rings are used so for the, your inlay and only the small casting rings are used for the large fixed partial denture your oval or the round of 63 mm of the casting rings are used that is your large casting rings are used this is something the ringless casting system in this the plastic ring with the rubber crucible former are used the ring in conic is the conical in shape with the tapering walls as the investment sets the investment is tapped out of the ring then burnout is done with without the casting ring this causes the greater expansion so casting ring liner they are commonly used to produce the expansion of the mold various metal materials used as a ring liners that is your asbestos liners your cellulose that is blotting paper liner ceramic ring liners and the combination of the ceramic and the cellulose ring liners what are the functions of the ring liner the ring liner allows uniform setting expansion of the investment how by decreasing the confinement of the rigid casting ring in case of the wet liner technique the absorbed water helps in your hygroscopic expansion so the thickness of the liner should be less than 1 mm very important for the exam point of view the amount of expansion depends on the number of liner used the expansion seen with the two liners is greater than the one line important coming on to the asbestos liner asbestos is a refractory to high temperature they show a sufficient amount of water absorption there are three types of asbestos the white asbestos that is least toxic and it is used in the dentistry blue asbestos it is most toxic and brown asbestos it is intermediately toxic so what mcq was there in your apg exam that's the, that the asbestos liners is used in a casting ring your answer is to permit expansion of the mold so basically asbestos liners are used to permit expansion of the mold asbestos is no longer used in dentistry because it produces three types of diseases that is the asbestosis the bronchogenic lung cancer and the mesothelioma that is fatal tumor coming on to the cellulose liner this material shows adequate water absorption it is burned during the burnt out procedure so to keep the investment in contact with the ring after burn out the liner is kept 3 mm short of the ring end this also restricts the longitudinal setting and the hygroscopic expansion it restricts Coming on to the procedure, a long cellulose liner is carefully adapted on the walls of the casting ring and is tucked in the position with a sticky wax. 
If the wet liner technique is used, the liner ring is immersed in water for some time if you are using a wet liner. So what you have to do is you just immerse the lined ring, uh, ring liner for some time into the water and then excess water is shaken away. After this, you have to squeeze the liner. Squeezing of the liner should be avoided. You don't. You are not going to squeeze the liner. The squeezing of the liner should be avoided. The liner should end 3 mm short of the casting ring. It is very important point. So coming on to the ceramic ring liner, they are basically aluminum silicate fibrous material. They do not absorb water to a large extent, but its network of fibers can retain a small amount of water on its surface. It does not absorb the water, but its network of the fibers can retain a small out of amount of water. You can see the water droplets on its surface. So they are refractory to the high temperature. The binders used in the ceramic liners are ex neoprene latex that can contribute to toxicity, which stimulate the fibrosis and which act as the adsorbent surface for the carcinogenesis. So they show potential for development of mesothelioma that is the fetal tumor and they possess fibers of length 5.3 to 17.8 mm with a diameter of 0.2 to 0.97 mm. Casting ring liner as I have already told you that it is dry and the wet dye in the dry the thick or the two liners can be used with a minimal thickness of less than 1 mm important as for your MCQ point of view expansion is always greater in unrestricted longitudinal direction. In the wet casting ring liner it is uniformly wet you have to avoid the squeezing and it helps cause it the semi hygroscopic expansion. So invest investing procedure first the wax pattern should be cleaned first either with the wax pattern cleaner or with the dilute synthetic detergent then your wax pattern should be air dry and the film of the cleanser your cleanser left on the pattern after that mixing of the investment is done in which the liquid liquid dispense first your powder is then added to the liquid and then all the powder should get wet with the liquid and method of mixing, mixing is either the hand mixing or the mechanical mixing under the vacuum. So the wax pattern should be cleaned of any debris grease with the help of the grease or the oils. For this we can use either a commercial wax pattern cleaner or a diluted synthetic detergent. The wax the pattern is left to air dry while the investment is being prepared. So how the investment being prepared? Your powder, you can mix the powder into the liquid. So thin film of cleaner on the pattern is formed that reduces the surface tension of the wax and provide the better, better wetting of the wax pattern by the investment. The wax pattern should not stand for more than 20 to 30 minutes before being invested. So it is the best to invest the wax pattern as soon as possible. Coming on to the mixing part. Mixing as I have already told you either the hand mixing or the vacuum mixing. The incidence of bubble free casting with different investing technique is open investing and vacuum investing which contributes 17 percent and vacuum investing 95 percent so the best method is vacuum mix and the vacuum pour technique but most popular method is vacuum mix and open pour because it is bubble free why you are using a vacuum mix or the vacuum pour technique because we don't want that the bubble is incorporated into the mix 
advantages of vacuum mixing it removes the air bubbles produce the smooth casting increase tensile strength of investment 95% of the casting is free from nodules so remove all the gaseous products of the chemical re reaction of the investment material time of the hand mix is 15 second vacuum mix 60 second working time will be 2 to 3 minutes mixing ratio in general more investment liquid less water leads to more expansion if you have more uh, less liquid more water then causes it causes less expansion begin with a dry ball use a maximum of 27 ml of liquid using more liquid result in a weaker mold important line for 100 grams of investment crowns or veneers is used 20 we can use 22 ml of the liquid and 5 ml of the distilled water for inlays and onlays 16 ml of liquid inlays and 11 ml of distilled water follow instruction on the investment packet coming on to the investment of the gypsum bonded investment material require very specific water powder ratios a variation of only 1 ml of the water can significantly alter the setting expansion and the character of the casting surface Therefore, increasing water powder ratio make the investing procedure easier. But what will happen is the investment will lose the strength. It lost the strength. So, which results in the cracks production. It will cause the crack to occur during the heating. And which results the surfing surface of the casting inferiors where the crack occur at the surface of the casting inferiors after the casting ring has been filled with the investment material any excess should be removed before the material set so next the filled ring is now set aside to allow the investment material to complete its setting reaction and accompanying the setting expansion so setting is complete within 30 to 40 minutes and hydroscoping technique is used freshly filled investment ring is immediately placed into the water bath for 30 minutes and kept at 100 degree fahrenheit that is 38 degree celsius that was investment investing of the gypsum bonded investment coming on to the phosphate bonded investment in this the expansion of the mold cavity can be increased by increasing the number of layer of asbestos liners or fibrous ceramic liners into the casting ring which increases the special liquid or water powder ratio increasing the total liquid liquid is to powder ratio so after that placing the investment in contact with the water during the setting burning out of the mold at the higher temperature 3 mm on each end is left as it serves to lock the investment within the ring therefore equalizes the retail and the actual expansion so residual harder investment in a unclean mixing ball with greatly accelerate the set of the newly mixed investment the phosphate investment should not be mixed in an apparatus that has been used for gypsum investment you have to keep this in mind that your apparatus should be clean residual gypsum will also accelerate the set and will break down the temperature above 2400 degree of fahrenheit liberating the sulfurous gases that can be detrimental to the casting so make sure that your apparatus should be clean ammonia gas is given off during the mix 
and it is important to hold the mixed investment under the vacuum after mixing that ceases to dissipate some of this gas and thereby reduce the incidence of bubbles adhering to the wax pattern so the additional holding time will be 15 seconds to 45 seconds so initial set of the phosphate bonded investment is generally rapid with the liberation of the heat if the burnout is not carried within one to two hours the ring should be stored in the humidor at 100 percent of the humidity not soaked in water please keep this in mind that you are not going to soak the ring into the water since excessive hygroscopic expansion may result if you soak the ring into the water so what you have to do is you just carry the ring into uh, in the humidor of 100% humidity not into the soap not soaked into the water now carefully grinding grinding and scraping the shiny skin of the end of the investment just prior to the burnout is advisable this removes a impervious layer opening off the pores and facilitating the gas release as the alloy is cast into the mold coming on to the burnout procedure once the investment has set for the appropriate period 45 minutes it is ready for the burnout the crucible former is seen carefully is then carefully removed it is advisable to begin the burnout procedure while the mold is still wet because water traps in the pores of the investment which reduce the absorption of the wax and also water vaporize which flush from the mold which, which removes or you can say which flushes the wax from the mold so this burnout after 45 minutes determines with a gradual increase in the temperature with the wax elimination and the phenomena that counts for the volume increases on the thermal expansion. When the alpha form is converted into beta form at an inversion temperature, it leads to the decrease in the density and increases the volume and volumetric expansion. Important point. For expansion phenomena to take place in the best possible condition, it is necessary that the internal temperature of the casting ring is gradually reach their prescribed level. The interval between the successive temperature level is such that it permits the external heat to reach the internal areas of your casting ring. So final burnt out temperature of the casting ring must be satisfied fundamental principle that it gives a degree of expansion with the minimal shrinkage of alloy. Maintain the viscosity of the alloy and permit controlled cooling. Coming on to gypsum investment, these investments are relatively fragile and require the use of the metal ring for protection during heating. So in this, the molds are usually placed in the furnace at the room temperature and slowly heat at a temperature between 650 degree to 700 degree Celsius for 16 minutes and held for 15 to 30 minutes at the upper temperature. Very important point. At 468 degrees Celsius for the hygroscopic technique, the investment obtains are from the three sources that is, the 37 degrees Celsius water bath expands the wax pattern. Warm water entering the investment mold from top adds some hygroscopic expansion, it leads to hygroscopic expansion. Thermal expansion at this temperature provides the needed expansion. Advantages are less molded degradation, cooler surface, convenience of placing molds directly at 
468 degrees Celsius. So rapid heat can cause flaking of the mold walls. Too rapid heating may cause cracking of the investment. In such case, outside layer of the investment become heated before the center section. Outside layers start to expand thermally, resulting in compressive strength in the outside layer that counteracts the tensile strength in the middle region of the mold. So coming on to the reaction. Decomposition and alloy contamination is related to a chemical reaction that taken place between the carbon and your calcium sulfate binder. Very important reaction when your, when your calcium sulfate reacts with the carbon, it leads to the formation of calcium sulfide and your carbon. And your CO then your when your calcium sulfate reacts with the calcium sulfide it leads to the formation of calcium oxide and your sulfur dioxide this reaction takes place whenever gypsum investment are heated above 700 degrees Celsius in the presence of your carbon sulfur dioxide as a product of this reaction contaminates gold casting and makes them extremely brittle sulfur dioxide methods of rapid burnt out procedures are placing the mold in the furnace at 315 degrees celsius for 30 minutes and then rapid heating or you can directly place it into the furnace at the final burnout temperature held for 30 minutes and the cast. So burnout procedure for phosphate bonded investment. For phosphate bonded investment you require a higher burnout temperature. Why? For the total elimination of the wax patterns. Completion of chemical and physical changes. Prevention of premature solidification of higher melting alloys with the usual burnout temperature ranges from 750 degrees Celsius to 1030 degrees Celsius. Phosphate bonded investment over their expansion by expansion of the wax pattern by setting expansion and by thermal expansion. By expansion of the wax pattern it is considerable because the setting reaction raises the mold temperature substantially. In the setting expansion, this is usually greater than gypsum, especially because the special liquids are used to enhance such expansion. Thermal expansion, this is greater when taken to temperature high than those used with the gypsum investment. Important points. Heating rate is usually low to 315 degrees Celsius and is rapid. Why? Because thereafter reaching completion after a hole at upper temperature for 30 minutes. Coming on to the casting. Casting of an alloy into the mold space uses two basic requirements. That is the heat source to melt the alloy and casting force for to force the molten metal into the mold. Casting melter is greater than the surface tension of the alloy plus resistance offered by the gas in the mold. This can be done with the different types of forces that is by vacuum force, your air or gas pressure or your centrifugal force. Melting point of pure gold 1063 degrees Celsius. Melting temperature of gold alloy that is 924 to 960 degrees Celsius. Melting temperature of base metal alloy that is 1155 to 1304 degrees Celsius. Heat source in this different types of material methods are used. So two basic methods are torch flame and electricity. In torch flame, you are using gas air, gas oxygen, air acetylene, 
oxygen acetylene and hydrogen oxygen generator second is the electricity so there are two types of torch tips that is the multi orifice and the single orifice zones of blue torch flame it is very important for your exam point of view there are four zones that is number one is the colorless zone in this your cold mixing zone or you can say unburned gas zone two is the combustion zone that is the partial combustion zone and the oxidizing zone or oxidation take place third is the reducing zone fourth is the oxidizing zone that is the burnt gas very important slide very important slide so question which was asked in your aims and aipg exam was reducing flames is used for melting alloy during casting i repeat which flame is used for melting alloy during casting your answer is the reducing zone or reducing flame melting of metal gas air torch gas air torch is used to melt conventional noble metal alloys that are used for the inlays grounds and bridges whose melting point is less than 1000 degrees celsius gas oxygen torch it is used to melt a metal ceramic alloy of higher temperature up to 1200 degrees celsius so in this the tip of the torch is available as a single orifice or the multi orifice the oxygen pressure is adjusted to your 10 to 15 pound per square inch can you see this the tip of the torch is your single or your multiple orifice the flame is directed onto the metal with the nozzle with nozzle of the torch about 1.5 cm away from the metal complete fluid should be obtained within 30 seconds at which the point the metal is poured into the mold oxyacetylene torch the actual production of the flame can be done by adjusting the pressure and the flow of individual gases commonly advised the pressure for acetylene nozzle is 3.5 newton per centimeter square and for the oxygen nozzle 7 to 10 newton per centimeter square very important for your exam point of view one part of the acetylene plus two and a half part of oxygen in this one part of acetylene and two and a half part of oxygen so the best results are obtained when the flame is used with a distance of 10 cm between the face of the blow torch nozzle and the base of the crucible if distance is reduced to 7.5 mm it causes slight porosity when it is in, uh, reduced to 5 mm it increase the porosity due to occlusion of hydrogen gas important point when the reducing zone is in contact the surface of the cold alloy is bright and mirror like when the oxid oxidizing portion of the flame is in the contact the alloy there is a dull film develop over the surface crucibles the melting of the alloy requires a crucible to act as a platform on which the heat can be applied to the metal there are three types of casting crucible available clay carbon quartz zirconia alumina these are the clay crucible these are used with the high noble and the noble metal alloys and basically these are used for your crown and bridges quartz crucible are important they are recommended for the high fusing alloys and the base type of base metal alloys and the palladium alloys 
carbon crucibles for the high noble crown and the bridge and also for higher fusing gold based metal ceramic alloys these are the carbon crucibles so carbon crucibles should not be used in melting of high palladium or the palladium silver alloys and also with the nickel chromium cobalt chromium base metal alloys so very important point that the carbon crucible crucible should not be used in the high melting point where in the palladium in the palladium silver alloys and the nickel chromium and the cobalt chromium base metal alloys the crucible used with the noble metal alloys should not be used for melting base metal alloys copper containing gold alloys and non copper gold alloys for use with the porcelain should not be melted in the same crucible crucible should be discarded if it contains large amount of oxides and contaminants from previous metal traditionally a wet lining of the asbestos sheet was used on a casting crucible the moistened asbestos sheet provides a clean and good surface on which the alloy could be melted advantages it is help to prevent the alloy contamination with oxides and residual that may be present in the crucible sufficient mass of the alloy must be present to sustain adequate casting pressure that is 6 g is typically adequate for premolar and interior casting 10 g is for the molar casting and 12 g is for the pontic coming on to the electrical source electrical resistance it is used to melt the ceramic alloys here the alloy is automatically melted in a graphite crucible so graphite crucible is used provide the best means of the temperature control it is quite convenient as compared to blow torch coming on to the electric arc melting it is used to melt higher fusing alloy it is used to create an electrical arc at the two end of the electrodes the apparatus requires high electrical input that is of 30 ampere coming on to the casting machines it is these are the devices for forcing the molten metal alloy into the mold under the pressure after the wax has been eliminated air pressure casting machine alloy is melted in situ in crucible followed by applied air pressure and the pressure is 10 to 15 pound per square inch centrifugal casting machine in this alloy is melted in the crucible and forced to mold by the centrifugal force coming on to the electrical resistant heated casting machine it is used to melt ceramic alloys here the alloy is automatically melted in a graphite crucible the crucible in the furnace is always against the casting ring so the metal button remain molten slightly longer and ensure complete solidification direct current are the melting machines direct current is produced between the two electrodes the alloys and the water cooled tungs and electrode the temperature between the arc rapidly increases to 4000 degrees celsius in which the alloy melts quickly higher in this the high is the higher the risk of overheating of the alloy may lead to damage may occur even after few seconds of overheating coming on to the induction melting machine metal is melted by the induction field that develop within the crucible surrounded by water cooled metal tubing 
The electric induction furnace is a transformer in which an alternating current flows through the primary winding coil and generates a variable magnetic field. And in the location of the alloy to be melted in the crucible. It is more commonly used for melting base metal alloys, not used for the noble metal casting and other machine. It is very important point. This is basically used for melting the base metal alloy, not used in the noble metal alloy casting. Coming on to the cleaning of the cast, consider the cold crown and bridge alloys. After casting that has been completed, the ring is removed and quenched in the water. Advantages are, noble metal is left in an annealed condition for, burnish, uh, for burnishing and polishing. When water contacts hot investment, violent reaction ensues, investment becomes soft, granular, casting is more easily cleaned. Then trimming is done from the button end of the ring and investment is being pushed out of the casting ring. See, it is investment being pushed off the, out of the casting ring. In this, the trimming is done from the bottom of the ring. Then the mold is broken and open. The mold is broken and open and you just take out the investment from the casting care must be taken that you do not damage the margin coming on to the sand blasting the casting is held in the sand blasting machine to clean the remaining investment this is the sand blasting machine you have to put your uh, hands inside the uh, sand blaster and the machine is there to clean the remaining investment from the surface of the investment. Coming on to the pickling, surface of the casting appears dark with the oxides and tarnish. Such film, surface film can be removed by the process of pickling. Best method for pickling is to place the casting in the dish and pour acid over it. Heat the acid but do not boil it. 50% of hydrochloric acid is used, sulfuric acid and ultrasonic devices are used. Gold and palladium based metal ceramic alloys and base metals these alloys are not generally pickled. Very important for your exam point of view. So one question was there that pickling it was asked in your PJ and your AIMS exam the pickling removes investment from gold casting. Pickling solution should be renewed frequently since it is likely to become contaminated. So you have to renew it frequently. Precious alloys that is gold, platinum, palladium can be soaked with the edge of hydrofluoric acid. Nickel chromium should never be placed in the acid because of the high reactivity. Coming on to the trimming, the casting is trimmed, shaped and smoothened with a suitable burr or stones. The sprue is sectioned off with the cutting disc. Polishing, minimum polishing is required if all the procedures from the wax pattern to casting are followed meticulously. So minimum polishing is uh, required if all the procedures from the wax pattern to casting are followed meticulously. White stone, rubber wheels, rubber disc, fine grits are used for finishing as used as a finishing and polishing agents. Coming on to the casting defects, error in the procedure often results in defective casting. Therefore, the defects are known as casting defects. Coming on to the classification, according to Phillips, it can be distortion, your casting defect is due to distortion, surface roughness and irregularity, porosity, incomplete or missing details based on the location, 
could be internal or external coming on to distortion distortion of the cast is probably related to the distortion of your wax pattern what are the causes of the distortion it can occur from the time of wax pattern preparation to the time of the investing due to stress relaxation distortion of the wax pattern occurs during the investment procedure it can be minimized by application of minimum pressure manipulation of wax at the high temperature investing pattern immediately if storage is necessary store in the refrigerator coming on to the surface roughness and irregularities surface roughness is defined it is defined as the relatively finely spaced surface imperfection whose height width and direction establish the predominant surface pattern surface irregularities isolated imperfections such as nodules that are not characteristic of entire surface area in this the surface roughness of the casting is greater than the wax pattern from which it is made because the particle size of the investment and the ability to reproduce the pattern in the microscopic detail air bubbles Small nodules on the casting are caused by the air bubbles that become attached to the surface or subsequent to the investing procedure. It can be prevented by proper investment technique, vibration of the mix or by vacuum so that air bubbles can be eliminated. Application of wetting agent properly and correctly and a thin layer has to be applied water films wax is repellent to water if the investment becomes separated from the wax pattern a water film may form irregularly over the surface appear as the minute ridges or the veins on the surface it can be prevented by using wetting agent correct your liquid powder ratio if your liquid powder ratio is too high it may produce the irregularities rapid heating rates it produces fins or spines of the casting when question was there in your aipg exam that fins and the spins on the casting is seen due to your answer is rapid heating rate what is the cause it is because of the flaking of the investment it can be prevented by heat gradually at least 60 minutes from the room temperature to 700 degrees celsius greater the bulk more slow level it heat coming on to the underheating incomplete elimination of wax residue may occur if the heating time is too short this factor is mainly important for low heat technique while prolonged heat during this the high technique uh, high heat technique leads to decomposition and disintegration of the investment and make the mold rougher so the product of decomposition are sulfurous compound which contaminates the casting so this is the basic reason why the surface of the casting does not respond to pickling sometime why because the pro- the product of decomposition are sulfurous compound which contaminates the casting very important point it can be prevented when the thermal expansion technique is used the mold should be heated to the casting temperature and never higher than the casting temperature your liquid powder ratio so your liquid powder ratio should be accurate if you are using too little water investment become too thick 
and cannot apply to the wax pattern. If you are using too much of water, it makes the investment easier but reproduce poor casting. So the casting pressure, too high pressure it causes the rough surface, low pressure causes the incomplete casting. Average is 0 0.10 to 0 0.14 megapascal in the air pressure machine and 3 to 4 turns of the spring in the centrifugal casting machine. Foreign bodies, any casting that shows sharp well defined deficiency indicates the presence of some foreign particles in the mold. They may be the pieces of investment the bits of the carbon from the flux or the sulfur component which forms the decomposition of gypsum investment or maybe high sulfur from the torch flame. So pattern position should not place too close together, should not place many pattern in the same plane. Space between the pattern is at least of 3 mm, 3 mm. Coming on to the impact of metal alloy. The causes the direct impact of molten metal on the weak portion of the mold surface may fracture or abrade the mold. It is prevented by the type of surface roughness and irregularities can be avoided by proper sprueing. I have already told you by keep your sprue at 45 degree rather than 90 degree carbon inclusions, carbon from carbon crucible, carbon containing investment and improperly adjusted torch may absorb by the alloys which results in the formation of carbides and visible carbon inclusions. Coming on to the porosity, it can be classified as solidification defect trap gases and residual air. Solidif uh, solidification defects includes your localized shrinkage porosity question may come from this micro porosity from your trap gases it should be it is pinhole porosity gas inclusion porosity subsurface porosity third one is your residual air coming on to the local shrinkage porosity it is caused by premature termination of the molten metal during solidification. It mainly occurs at the sprue casting junction. It was a question in your AIMS exam that the localized shrinkage porosity is occur where? So basically it occur at the sprue casting junction. Can you see this? It is the porosity. So causes are time if the diameter is too narrow, the length of the sprue is too long, absence of reservoir and the placement of the sprue in the direction of 90 degree. It can be prevented by using sprue of correct thickness, attach sprue to the thickest portion of the wax pattern as I have already told you at the beginning of this. Flaring the sprue at the point of attachment, placing reservoir close to the attachment. Coming on to the suck back porosity, a hot spot is created by the hot metal that impinging on the mold wall near the sprue. In this, this hot spot causes the reason to freeze the last, which in this the sprue is already solidified no more molten metal is available which results into shrinkage or suck back porosity there was a question related to your suck back porosity that okay i'm telling you later it is often occur at occlusio axial or the inciso axial line angle very important and can be prevented by flaring the point of sprue attachment reducing the temperature between the mold and the molten metal okay so the question was the back poros pressure porosity can be avoided by 
So your answer is placing the sprue at the least one quarter inch away. I repeat, bad pressure porosity can be avoided by placing the sprue at least one quarter inch away from the end of the casting ring. Coming on to the pinhole or the gas inclusion property, it is characterized by spherical contour but gas inclusion porosity are much larger than the pinhole porosity. It occurs primarily because the most metal dissolved gases when molten, these gases expelled during solidification. Example, the copper and the silver dissolve oxygen. Platinum and palladium dissolves hydrogen. Also, be caused by gas occluded from a poorly adjusted torch flame or use of oxidizing zone rather than reducing zone. So that's why reducing flames or the reducing zones is used for melting alloy during the casting. Casting is usually black. Do not clean easily by pickling. Coming on to the subsurface porosity, it is, it is caused by the simultaneous nucleation of the solid grains and gas bubbles at the first movement that the alloy freezes at the mold walls. It can be prevented by controlling the rate at which the molten metal enters the mold. Coming on to the back pressure porosity, sometimes refers to as entrapped air porosity. Important for your exam point of view, for your MCQ point of view, it is also referred to the entrapped air porosity. It is found on the outer surface of the casting when the casting or the mold temperature is low. That solidification occurs before the trapped air can escape. causes in this the inability of air in the mold to escape through the pores in the investment. It can be prevented by proper burnout, sufficient high casting pressure, adequate liquid powder ratio and the thickness of, thickness of the investment between the tip of the pattern and the end of the ring is not greater than 6 mm. Coming on to the incomplete casting. Factors that inhibit the mold filling is insufficient venting, insufficient casting pressure, pressure should be applied at least 4 seconds, incomplete elimination of wax, low liquid powder ratio and viscosity of fused metal. Can you see this? This is the discrepancy. This is your metal casting and this is your discrepancy, your incomplete casting. So this is all about your casting defect. Now I have some important questions, important MCQs which was asked in your previous AIMS, uh, AIMS exams or AIPG exams. So number one, the ring liners that is the asbestos, cellulose or ceramic liner are placed inside the casting ring which will allow for mold expansion. Second MCQ gap between the true end of the casting ring and the wax pattern should be 1 by 4 inch. Next question resistance to corrosion in a cobalt chrome casting is due to the presence of your answer is chrome it was asked in your AIPG and AIMS exam as I have already told you pickling removes the investment from the gold casting next MCQ is glossy smooth margins of the castings are due to answer is incomplete wax elimination Next MCQ is as I have already told you 
that reducing flames is used for melting alloys during casting next question use of thin sprue causes localized shrinkage porosity it was asked in your aims exam coming on to the next mcq subsurface porosity can be decreased by your answer is decreasing the sprue thickness as i've already told you the sprue next mcq the sprue in the wax pattern should be placed at 45 degree angle next mcq the sub pack porosity is due to your answer is hot spot next mcq the asbestos liners used in a casting ring answer is to permit expansion of the mold please write it down these are very important questions next mcq the fins and the spines on the casting is seen due to answer is rapid heating rate next is the component responsible for allergy in the dental casting alloy as you all know it is nickel next question casting shrinkage in gold alloys is maximum in class 5 restorations next mcq sprue should ideally be made of answer is hollow metal next question dental wax pattern should be invested as soon as possible because of danger of distortion due to relaxation of internal stress next mcq the function of a reservoir in a sprue is answer is to avoid the local shrinkage porosity answer is to avoid the local shrinkage porosity it was asked in your aip exam so next mcq is sprue pin is attached to posterior teeth in answer is marginal ridge next question the crucible indicated for casting base metal alloys is answer is quartz crucible i repeat crucible indicated for casting base metal alloys is quartz crucible last mcq is the pure titanium is the only pure metal that is used for the dental casting purpose i repeat pure titanium is the only pure metal that is used for dental casting purpose so this is all about your dental casting defects i hope it is clear you just go through once and you will be clear and question is being asked from this topic it is a very important topic so this is all about this topic thank you